Hi YouTube, welcome to this video. Sorry for not posting a video for a while, I've had a lot on and I've put loads of energy and loads of time into making this video. So in this video it's a really good um, instructional on how to make a grow light for your vivarium or terrarium. It doesn't have to be a grow light for a vivarium, you can use it for other reasons such as greenhouses or grow rooms, but uh, for this, for the purposes of this video, I'm doing it in the context of a vivarium. Um, so I think you'll you'll really like it. As you can see in the video above, um, we've got some really decent lighting for a vivarium, which would usually cost a lot of money on the high street, and it's going to save you a lot of money. You're going to be able to understand how to make it and all the science behind it. So I'm going to get straight into the science of it um, and show you this this slide. So. We're going to make grow light for a vivarium. So the contents of this, we're going to talk about scientific theory, the purposes of the light in the vivarium, and also how to actually construct the light. So there's three purposes to the grow light. It's to illuminate the vivarium, to create a vibrant display. It's to replicate natural light from the sky. So we want it to look naturalistic and look like it's actual daylight. And also, thirdly, it's to provide an optimum food source for plants to thrive. So this will increase growth rate, floweration, and also strengthen the plant's anatomy in terms of root growth, leaves, and stems being very um, hardy and tough and very uh, sturdy. So this is an example of perfect lighting. So you can see there's some java moss on the uh, wooden branches they have in this vivarium. I think that's an Ufaga pamilia. I'm not really sure, though. Um, and there's some ferns dotted about. That's an example of perfect lighting. You can see that it looks very naturalistic and al also it must be good because the, flat, the plants are thriving. So to, to satisfy the, um, the main, well one of the main purposes, to illuminate the vivarium, uh, the, the vivarium can easily be illuminated with LEDs that have a sufficient light spectrum and brightness. So the brightness within a vivarium is measured in lux. So lux is a measurement of how bright the vivarium is at a certain point within the vivarium. Um, so it's that's a shortened word for luminous flux per unit area. But this is all dependent on the output of the LED lights and distance from the light to the plant. And you can use a cal calculator to work this out. Um, so what brightness do you need? Well, um, it's best checking using the link in the description below. Um, but you can also just Google this. Uh, Devil's Ivy, for example, uh, Epi Epipremnum, Pothos Ivy. Uh, this should be kept at at least 500 to 2,500 lux. And then when you look at Ficus Pamilla, 3,200 lux. Java Moss, 500 to 1,000 lux. These are the main plants you're going to be using within your vivariums, especially for high humidity tanks that are housing dart frogs and such. Uh, but this is just a, a base guide. Actual daylight, I went out and tested it. You can get an app on your phone where you can measure the, the brightness. And the lux is around 50,000. Um, I know that grow lights that you can get, such as Jungle Dawns, produce about 5,000 lux. So nowhere near 50,000. But that's considered one of the best grow lights on the market for vivariums. So ha this, I'm going to show you now how to calculate the LED specifications to match the brightness requirements for your vivarium. So it's always best to, to think this properly through and plan it out so you're getting the maximum amount of light uh, that's, that fits the purpose. You want it to be as efficient as possible and as engineered as possible. So this is an example. The bulb at the top is the LED uh, and you've got the plant at the bottom and it's within a tank. So the 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 bulb the led produces brightness in the terms of lumens so lumens is the brightness produced lux is the brightness that's received at a certain area so to work out lux you do the lumens there's a there's an, like an algebraic formula for this i don't know what it is but there's plenty of calculators online that you can use to to get that so you work you work it out using the lumens produced by the leds the beam angle which is the sort of the, the spread of how how much the the light is illuminating sometimes it's quite narrow um, beam angles other other times it's, it's sort of like a, a general brightness and then you use the distance between the light and the plant 
to calculate the looks at the plants level. So this is an example of the calculation. So we've got our lumen to looks calculator. I'm going to use 18 inches because that's the general um, height of a, of a varian. They don't usually get any taller than that. So if we put 18 in inches in, which is 0 0.45 meters, and then we look on the LED website, find the beam angle, which was 120 um, degrees. And then we work out the looks that we want. Um, so we want 2000, for example, press looks to lumen, and then it transfers it to 1272 or whatever that was. So when we look at these LEDs, this is just an example of like an LED shop. You can see the lumens that are produced per meter. So you can use that to plan out how you're going to illuminate your tank effectively to the looks that's required. So similarly, if you put 5,000 looks in, we can do looks to lumens and it says 3,180 lumens. So again, just go back to the LED strips and you can work out what is needed. Right, so the next point is to replicate natural light. Now, natural daylight is actually like a white colour. And this is because it incorporates all the different spectrums, all the different colour ranges within the, the rainbow, essentially. So if you look at the screen, there's red, orange, yellow, blue, uh, green, indigo and violet. If you shine white sunlight through a prism, the prism actually splits off all these different types of light and you can physically see all the different um, shades of colours within that white light. It is quite interesting and not many people know about that. So natural light is full spectrum. How do we work out what full spectrum is? Well, what we use is a colour temperature chart. So for full spectrum light, as you can see, it's in the middle. It's around 6,000, 6,500 kelvins. Um, whereas when you look at sort of the more red colours, that's going to about 1,000k. And the more cooler colours, uh, which is blue, goes to about 10,000k. But 6,500k incorporates more range of colours. To make sure that the light is an effective food source, we need sufficient brightness, full spectrum lighting, and we also need to tactically use the, the favoured colours from the light spectrum. So if you have a look on the um, screen, the picture on the on to the bottom left, you can see that there is a number of different <clears throat> grow room setups, and they have blue light, red light, um, sort of a violet light, which is a mixture of blue and red. If you mix blue and red, you get violet or purple, and a full spectrum light. Now, each colour does different things for the plants. The plant processes the different colour ranges in different ways for either plant growth or root growth or creating chloroplasts and chlorophyll. Uh, but it turns out that generally plants want full spectrum light, but blue and red um, are actually favourable for, for like increased growth rate. So this is all due to photosynthesis. This is the plant's ability to convert sunlight into food. So it conv converts light, water and carbon dioxide and minerals to produce um, glucose, which is stored within the plant and acts as a food source and also produces oxygen as a byproduct. So this is because the plants have chloroplasts within the leaves and these are tiny cells that acts as um, solar panels within the leaf. Um, so if you look on the diagram on the screen, there's all sorts of different components within the chloroplast, but the main are chlorophyll, um, and these are, act as like miniature solar panels. But there's a lot more that goes on than, than just light conversion. As you can see, there's mention of a Calvin cycle, which is sort of like the sort of um, circadian sort of sleeping rhythm of the plant, um, and it, it changes during the season. So it's like a, a hormonal change as such. Uh, but there's a lot um, that goes on within the chloroplast. So favourable colours for plants are actually blue and red. They like full spectrum, but blue and red, uh, for some reason, there's been a lot of scientific research which has shown that when plants are exposed to blue or red, they sort of hold on to more, they produce more food um, and, and grow faster and stuff like this. Uh, but if you have a look, so the sun produces this full range. Um, it, the, the plant will actually take in blue and red light, but with green light, it will actually just reflect it. The, the chloroplast acts as reflectors, and that's why most plants are green. <clears throat> it's actually um, reflecting that green light, which is quite interesting. To, and it's something that people don't usually think about. 
Um, so this is just an example of the a chart which shows the wavelength of light and how much um, it absorbs, how much of that light was absorbed by the chlorophyll. And as you can see in the blue and the red ranges, they're a lot higher than the greens, yellows and oranges. Uh, the greens mainly because the plant doesn't like green light and will just reflect it out. So blue light has been shown scientifically to boost production of chloroplast, which then causes the plant to grow more leaves. So plants are exposed to um, more blue light will be generally more bushier. Red light, however, increases the growth of roots and floweration. So when you look at um, plants that have been exposed to red light, they tend to be quite um, large, but not so much as bushy as the ones um, given blue light. But when you combine blue and red and full spectrum, then you can optimize the growth of your plants and create really healthy plants.